Well, Robbie, thanks again for being here. It's good to be here. Thanks. Okay, well, we have a lot to talk about. Um, first and foremost, the schedule this year in the 2013 season, very exciting, unprecedented really for the BYU football program. What are you looking forward to most about the upcoming season? Well, I'll tell you what. First of all, I think we're going to have a fantastic team. I think there's a lot of anticipation. Uh, bringing Coach and I back and the new offense and what they're developing with the speed up play, I really like that. And, you know, just looking at that schedule. I mean, we have an opportunity to really show our skills and talents out there to America, and we have the schedule to do it. Is there a game that you've pinpointed that you're really looking forward to seeing specifically? Um, you know what? I, I've always re really respected Wisconsin. And to go back there in November, I think the atmosphere is going to be crazy. It's an unbelievable college atmosphere town. And not necessarily that that is the game that's going to make or break the season, because early on, there's some great games. Um, so actually, if I had to pinpoint a game, I think that game against Texas at home for our opener is going to be awesome. No doubt it'll be a fantastic challenge. Blaine Fowler and I talked a little bit about that earlier, about their speed, their athleticism, and just what they bring to the table. So let's say BYU starts with a win at Virginia, and they can beat Texas at home. Do you think that jumps up into the national spotlight after two games? Uh, there's no question. I think, I think they're going to be nationally televised games, so a lot of people are going to see that. But you're going to be, you know, Virginia's going to be a tough game at their place. I really like that for the opener. But then the opportunity to play one of the premier college football teams in America with the Texas Longhorns it would be a, it's going to be a tremendous thing. So I love having them at home, having that um, opportunity to go head-to-head -head with them and, and show them what we can do. Let's talk a little bit about your playing days, um, and uh, if, if you don't mind going no, that's back good. there. That's good. <laughs> we'll get into some things that Blaine Fowler told me a little bit later, okay. some, some secrets, um, but uh, we'll address those later. How did you feel coming in when we talked about the quarterback factory following Gifford Nielsen and Mark Wilson and Jim McMahon and Steve Young? At that point, did you feel any pressure coming in as a BYU quarterback? Oh, man, it was crazy. <laughs> I mean, being recruited in high school, you know, I saw Mark Wilson and the things that he did. Then all of a sudden I'm being recruited by BYU and Jim McMahon's the quarterback. His junior year he sets like 80 some odd NCAA records and BYU had won like, it seemed like 10 or 11 WAC championships. And then when I finally got here and got to know Steve and, and was able to back up Steve and see his accomplishments, there was a lot of pressure. Because Steve's year was a team that was very loaded and talented with a lot of great players and then there's a bunch of no names the next year and so I always said to myself I don't want to be the first quarterback not to win the championship <laughs> the WAC championship so that was my kind of my ultimate goal to do that but I felt tons of pressure following all those guys and Fortunately, it turned out pretty well. I'd say so. Uh, national championship yeah. in 1984, a remarkable season that uh, we'll talk about forever. Uh, you talk about Mark Wilson and, and those guys in front of you. We're going to have him in a little bit later. And playing for Coach Lavelle Edwards, who coached so many great quarterbacks, what was it like to play for Lavelle? And do you have a favorite uh, memory from him in the locker rooms? Well, you know what? I think First and foremost, uh, Coach Edwards, I think, is kind of like a father figure to all of us. I mean, he's just a tremendous individual and human being. And as a football coach, you know, with, um, with what he did with the passing game, this was my ultimate place to play. This is where I wanted to be. And he was, uh, you know, not only a great football coach and a great person to be involved with, but the, uh, the father figure thing was kind of uh, what set him apart from a lot of other coaches that were, recruit that were recruiting me. Just because I, I was kind of a homebody. I didn't really enjoy being away from home. So coming from California at first was very hard for me. And having him here and being a part of it was, uh, was great for me. We're going to bring in uh, Twitter now, and you can join the conversation again, hashtag BYU Media Day. This question coming from Jacob Gonzalez. What went through your mind the second you realized you had won the national championship? Well, it was, it was kind of different back then. Because, first of all, when we beat Michigan, we felt we were national champions. Yeah. But it was still up to the media and the voters to decide. So we had already finished finals and everything. So I was at home with my family <laughs> in California, and so the team wasn't even together. 
And so when they finally, when we watched all the other bowl games and we kind of figured out who had to win, who had to lose, and when everything kind of fell into place again, we still had to wait for that next day for when the vote came in. So when, when it finally came in that we were national champions, it was really surreal. I mean, it was, uh, it was just like a dream come true. Way back in your mind, that's everybody's dream yeah. to be national champions. But in reality, you know, I was really happy with winning the WAC championship. So for that to happen was uh, kind of a dream come true and something that I knew was going to be very difficult for BYU to obtain again. Yeah, that's a great question coming. Thanks again for Jacob uh, for asking that. And uh, if you have any questions for Robbie or any of our guests, a reminder again, BYU Media Day, the hashtag on Twitter. Let's talk about quarterbacks that are up and coming here. Taysom Hill, uh, Ammon Olsen, very capable. What do you like about them and what do they bring specifically to the BYU team? Well, first of all, I like both of them. I mean, I've watched Ammon Olsen throw out on the practice field and I've seen him in a couple games and in the spring game. And he's a talented young man. Yeah. So I think there's, you know, there's always going to be that battle there, which I really like for, for Taysom. Now, Taysom is a unique individual, a unique quarterback. He can do it all. I mean, he can run. And what people don't realize, which I think they're even going to be more surprised about, is how well he throws the football. I mean, he's a very accurate thrower. He has a, throws a tight spiral. And he's such a big, strong guy. So I think he's going to be able to make a lot of plays running around, not even called plays for him. I think just through scrambling and making plays, I think that's where he's going to be the most effective. And, um, you know, if he can get, just get a grasp of the offense, get the ball up on time and move those chains, I think he's going to do a lot of great things here. Yeah, it was evident when we watched State of the Program with Bronco Mendenhall that he's concerned about Taysom's health and has said, yeah. you know, don't worry about running people over. In fact, he said that's off the table now. Yeah. Learn how to slide, learn how to get out of bounds and to get rid of the ball to keep him healthy. How much of a concern was that for you playing in, in the 80s? Did the coaches talk to you a lot about, about sliding or were you just kind of like, you know, I'm going to do what I do? I was a natural. <laughs> I slid and got out of bounds. I never took any unnecessary hits because I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to be a guy that's going to run over anybody. I wasn't going to be a guy that's going to outrun anybody. So I kind of got what I could get, got down to play the next play, or I got out of bounds to come back for the next series. And so, in as big as Taysom is, I know it's sometimes hard for him because he feels like he's probably invincible, yeah. but he's got to be smart in what he does. And there's no reason for him to take any unnecessary hits to get an extra one or two yards. So hopefully that they kind of grill. I think they're going to have to grill it into him, though, and uh, or drill it into him for him to understand that. But he, he's pretty effective in the pocket, too. He's a true dual threat quarterback. You saw that incredible breakaway speed against Hawaii when he took off for that 67-yard touchdown run and, and the physicality right there against Weber State. Uh, but and, and here, here is the run right there. He is running away from fast guys. And you don't see that in very many quarterbacks. No, in fact, he's, he's really an impressive guy. I mean, he'll throw, when I see him out outside throwing to the team and everything, he's just got his shirts and short on. And, and so, I mean, he's just a ripped guy. I mean, if I had that body, I would have played <laughs> 10 more years. No question about it. And so he can do those kind of things. So I don't necessarily think they need to have set calls for him. I mean, he's going to run plenty just on his own. And it's so hard. I remember when I was coaching, when we played dual threat quarterbacks, our coordinate, our defense coordinators and coaches could never sleep because they were always the hardest people to defend because yeah. there's not enough players on defense to cover it all. And so he's going to cause some headaches out there. Yeah, it's good to have him on BYU's yes, team. Yes, for sure. Causing the other coaches some headaches. It's hard to top your game-winning touchdown pass against Kelly Smith as far as top moments at BYU, but do you have a favorite play um, in your mind from when you played? You know what? It was um, – there's a lot of great plays. I mean, I remember going back and playing uh, at Hawaii in 1984, and the play that Kyle Morrell made on the goal line yeah. was probably one of the favorite plays of, of, uh, that I've ever seen. And, and it, was, it was just like the timing of it, uh, the play, the circumstance of it, and just being able to time it out so perfectly. <laughs> I mean, by the time the quarterback had the ball in his hands, he was on top of him. So that was incredible as itself. And then just, you know, there's so many out there, though. I don't know if I have any specific ones, yeah. but there were a lot of great individual efforts by our teammates. Not only 
by uh, offense and defense, but also special teams. I mean, we were playing Baylor, and we were backed up a little bit, and Lee Johnson was punting. He kicked it from the goal line, and it landed on their 20. So it was 80 yards in the air. <laughs> and that, that was, it was just one of those shocking things that you just can't believe happened. But I, I saw it, and that was an impressive thing, too. That's why Lee had a great career in the NFL. That's how, that's how you last for like 17 years <laughs> exactly. in the NFL. We're going to go to another fan question. This from from Cosmo Cougar. Is there one play that you think of? Oh, actually, it, we're going to switch it up a little bit, that you would like to have a do-over for. So some, a play that you're like, oh, I wish I would have hit that one. Actually, does it have to be the 84 season? can be any season. I'm going to have to go to 85 season. It was, uh, we were going down and we were playing UTEP. One of the hardest losses we've ever had. And we had a bootleg called. And they kind of had the perfect play on for it. So as I, if I, as I made the fake and booted out, there was a guy in my face. So I threw the ball to get rid of it. And, the, and as I got hit, the ball kind of fluttered. Uh. And a, a defensive back picked it off and went 100 yards for a <laughs> touchdown. So there's no question that would that's be the, the play, play I would take over. Oh, that's pretty impressive and incredible that you remember that. With impressive such... for them, not impressive <laughs> for me. You, you remember with such uh, vividness I right know, there. I know, for sure that one. Something you'll never forget. Robbie Bosco, thanks so much for joining us here on uh, BYU Web Chats. We appreciate your time and uh, have fun with the quarterback factory. It's good to be here. Thank you.